don't actually know how to introduce this vlog. This is not exactly a travel vlog like the ones I've always done, but it is something that I have been wanting to see for a while and I'm finally here, so I feel I have to share this experience with you guys. I am in the Kennedy Space Center of Cape Canaveral, which is the main launching point of pretty much every single NASA and SpaceX mission that is worth noting these days. I didn't actually realize that the uh, Mission Control Center and the launch places were in two completely separate parts of the United States. But this is the first time I'm venturing into any area like this in the US. I've always done, uh, you know, big cities, big touristy spots. But this, I feel, is for the real geek inside me. So let's go on this journey together. And in case you're wondering, everything that you just saw are actually real rockets. And it's crazy to see how far the space exploration game has come in the 30 years in between uh, the 60s and the 90s and even up to today. So the brief history of this place is that it first started being used in the early 50s but then in the late 50s when Russia started upping their space game, uh, NASA started looking at this area and they actually bought quite a bit of the land here in the 60s. So then they spent the 60s uh, figuring out how best to utilize it and Kennedy said that in the next 10 years he wants people not only to be launched up to space but to be launched up to the moon. So that's exactly what NASA took upon themselves and that's exactly what happened as you all know. This is the spot where the Apollo missions were launched, it's the spot that today SpaceX uses to uh, launch their satellites as well. So it is very very important. Um, when it comes to space exploration, which is something that a lot of people don't know because obviously Houston is the more famous one. I'm curious to see exactly what there is um, in this whole visitor center. It is a lot more touristy than I expected, but nevertheless has some amazing features that I'm looking forward to exploring. This is Space Shuttle Atlantis and it was in service for 26 years. A space shuttle basically mimics the movements of a rocket, a spacecraft, a glider, and everything in between, which is why the discovery and the manufacturing of space shuttles uh, was such a huge uh, revelation for people about 40 years ago when it was first made. Those mosaic tiles that you see we just watched a video about this and this is actually what caused some explosions to happen back when they were first making this shuttle because upon re-entry to earth they would heat up and uh, they would melt away so that's some of the problems that they faced but look i actually cannot believe that this thing behind me has been to space I personally always love looking at images of space and the thing taking the beautiful images that we're seeing today is the Hubble Space Telescope of which you can see a mock-up right behind me. It is really giant in real life. Okay, I'm about to show you guys some Mars rovers starting from the oldest ones all the way up to the newest one that was launched in 2020. So when I saw that there was a visitor center uh, for this whole complex, I expected it to be a tiny little museum, maybe with like an exhibition or I don't know, like a mock-up rocket or something. But this place reminds me of Disneyland. Look at this. I've got a whole map. Got a map. There we go. It's full of activities for kids, for grown-ups. It's got rides. There is a bus taking you around. There's music blasting in the background. Here we've got the world's largest space shop which I'm actually just curious about at this point so let's go inside and see it's definitely big I'll give him that now can you buy a spacesuit that is something that my cameraman wants to know the answer is yes what I did find in the space store is freeze dried vanilla ice cream. Now this is something that apparently people in space would eat, like a bunch of freeze-dried food, and I've always wondered what it tastes like. So 
I got ice cream and um, some strawberries, but I thought ice cream was more appropriate because I do have ice cream in every single vlog that I do. This looks questionable. Looks like it's cardboard. Let's try it. <laughs> Out of all the ice creams I've ever tried in all of my vlogs, this is definitely the grossest one. <laughs> It's literal powder. Look. It feels like a toy. It feels like I'm eating cardboard. My cameraman's gonna have that now. Hold on, I'm gonna try the strawberries. The freeze dried strawberries. There we go. That's what they look like. A bit of nice marketing on the front cover, but what's inside is probably what they would get in less fancy packaging up there. Okay, there we go. Do you know what they taste like? <laughs> Thank you, cameraman. Yes, the strawberry taste is there. Do you guys know the special K cereal that has strawberry bits in them? This is exactly what you're getting in this pack. Not sure it's worth the $6.50, but the ice cream definitely is just for the experience. So any ice cream you'll have after this will be amazing. Back to where I started and this has been absolutely epic and just seeing all of this makes me wonder what the visitor center and exhibitions in Houston are like. The control center is obviously a big part in uh, the space missions that were launched from here. So I think you and I should go there. Let's do this. Look at that, made it to Houston. It only took about three days. <laughs> I am so excited to be here. Houston is not only the first word that was heard from the Earth when people first landed on the moon, but it is also home to the Mission Control Center where all of the space missions get controlled from. It is home to the astronaut training program of which there have been about 3,000 people up until today. It is also the home to a very popular space program and space camp, uh, which you have to reserve years in advance to be a part of and they've also made a huge uh, museum exhibitions and uh, tourist experience out of everything that they've uncovered in their space exploration program so far so stick around i know that you'll also enjoy this segment of the vlog i'll try to see as much as i can and hopefully we'll be able to see something totally different than what we saw in cape canaveral i'm starting my tour here at the houston space center in a mega exciting place which is this space shuttle. Now, space shuttles were a huge discovery uh, back in the 70s and 80s, and basically the way they worked is they would go to space, do what they had to do in the fashion that rockets would, and then they would glide back down to Earth onto the water. And that worked really well um, because they could get them back and not have them be destroyed up in space. But the thing is, to get them back to where they had to go on Earth, they would have to piggyback on a 747 plane, which is exactly what you're seeing behind me. So for me, this is absolutely astounding because this would happen in the very early 80s and that's exactly the time period uh, that this particular shuttle is from. Really excited to take you inside the shuttle to give you a tour outside so you guys can see exactly why I'm as enthusiastic as I am right now. Okay, so we've seen the space shuttle from outside and this is what it looks like inside. Have you ever been curious to see an actual spacesuit from 1969? Not only is it from 1969, but it was also worn by astronaut Mike Collins when he landed back on Earth from the moon landing mission of Apollo 11. 
and this space was actually used to walk on the moon during the Apollo 12 mission by astronaut Pete Conrad. This is one of the things that I really wanted to see when coming here. It sounds silly, but I was really excited to see pieces of the moon. I'm really fascinated by the moon. I've actually done a lot of paintings with the moon in it. I think it's in human nature to be awed and wowed by what we see in the sky. So to see pieces of it right in front of me is pretty surreal. We're just saying how you have to be an absolute nutcase to go to space and then come back in this tiny little thing and crash into the ocean with it and also be the first ever person to do that like not knowing what's about to happen and just being like yep i'll do this everything's fine and what you're about to see now is a piece of the apollo 17 landing equipment so that is the last manned mission that went to the moon and obviously the size is already a lot bigger there's a lot more room inside it's more spacious and almost looks luxurious in comparison to the other one that i've just shown you NASA is planning a whole new mission to the moon, which is called Artemis, and it will send the first woman and the first person of color to the moon, amongst many other astronauts. They're planning for the astronauts to stay there for longer, explore more, and uh, obviously do more research. What you're looking at now is a, a prototype of a spacesuit built for that mission, which is hopefully happening in 2025. What we've got here is a space exploration vehicle, meaning that this would be used by astronauts who are already in space to get close to the targets they want to explore. I am inside a mock-up of uh, the Skylab missions which were used in the 70s, most notably 1973 and 1974 as a way to orbit the Earth and this is what eventually led to the ISS. So this was the first inspiration to what would later become the International Space Station. I would obviously love to come back to the Houston Exhibition Center. There's so much to do, you can spend the whole day here. I almost feel like it was a little bit less touristy and hectic than Cape Canaveral, but at the same time, I've only seen maybe about a tenth of it. There is just such huge variety in the things that you can experience here. So yeah, definitely a nice little introduction. Hopefully I shared some interesting things with you guys. And I'm really hoping that at some point I'll get to come back and literally spend at least six hours here. Well, that is it for my geeky space vlog. I hope you enjoyed that. I would like you guys to tell me in the comments below which of these experiences you preferred and which of them you'd rather visit. Is it Cape Canaveral or is it the Houston Exhibition Center? Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Keep smiling, read about space, and I'll see you next time. Sir, you can be up there. <laughs> Sir, excuse me. No touching the no gravity. He doesn't want to listen.